Hey everybody, it's Chris from Zano, and I'm super excited today to walk you through some performance comparisons between native function stack functions, JavaScript Lambda functions, and our Zano Transform engine with the expression data type. Now, if you're not familiar yet with Zano Transform, that's okay. The TLDR is that it is an extension of our dot notation that allows you to filter and manipulate data using the expression data type. We'll have a video linked down in the description that gives you a walkthrough and a little tutorial of how that works. Today, we're gonna walk through some specific data manipulation examples that can show you the massive speed boost that you can gain by using Xano Transform. Now, this video is not meant to highlight deficiencies in using native function stack functions or Lambda functions. The point is for you to understand the huge benefit to learning how to use the expression data type with Xano Transform. It can really speed things up when building your backend. Now, of course, as a no-code platform, we know it can seem a little bit strange maybe to promote essentially using a scripting language to build your no-code application. We have designed Xano Transform to be completely human readable, and we're confident that you will be able to pick it up super quick. And we're always here to help if you have any questions. This video is here to show you the benefits of putting in the time to learning how transform and the expression data type work. So let's hop over to Xano and take a look at our data. And you can see here, we just have some fake customer data here. Very simple stuff. We have first and last names, companies, locations, phone numbers, emails, and a subscription date. I'm going to walk you through three different examples that show manipulating this data in different ways so you can see the benefits of potentially using Xano Transform to manipulate your data, especially if the data sets are quite large. This table has about 100,000 records in it. For our examples, we're not going to be doing the entire table, but we will be working with tens of thousands of records at a time. So in our first example, we're going to take this first and last name, and we're just going to combine it into a single field. Very simple. So let's take a look at that API. So we have a query all records here that just pulls 25,000 records from our table. And then we're using a for each loop on those results with the concat filter to take the first name and combine it with the last name. So let's go ahead and run this and we will see how long it takes. Okay, so it looks like we hit about six seconds here and you can see our full name fields right there as expected, everything works as it should, but this did take a little bit of time to do, and maybe we want that to be a little bit faster. Let's take a look at an example of doing this with JavaScript. So we have the same query here, and here is our Lambda function. Feel free to pause if you'd like to review this code. We'll go ahead and close this, and let's run this example, and we will see how long it takes using JavaScript. Okay, so it looks like we're right around the same time as the for each loop. It's a little bit faster, but not very much. We can see our full name fields are once again populated as expected, but we still haven't quite hit the performance target that we want for this function. So let's take a look and see how we would do this using Xano Transform. So in our function stack, we only have one step, and that is just the query that returns 25,000 records. In our response, we are using the set filter with the expression data type to combine the first name and last name into one field. And this expression, it's pretty simple to read. We have anchored selection here using this dollar sign character and anchored selection just gives us a very dynamic way to reference the data that we need to work with. So we are setting the full name and we are taking that first name, putting a space in between and then using the last name. It's kind of like a loop, but it does it all at once, which makes it a lot faster. And let's see how much faster this actually is. So it looks like this took us a little under two seconds to take those first names and last names and combine them into our new full name field. So it is significantly faster than using native functions or JavaScript. Our next example, we are going to be taking a look at these phone number fields that you can see here. And they are provided in all sorts of different formats. They have extensions attached to some of them. 
This is a pretty common issue when working with user generated data. It can come in in a number of different formats, but we want to standardize it when we're working with it inside of our function stacks. So we are going to be taking these phone numbers and just turning them into a standard US format. And we're also going to be dropping the extensions and then removing these fields and only leaving the new fixed phone number field. So let's take a look at our for each loop for that. Again, same query as before, just returning 25,000 records here. We're using a for each loop against those results. In the first step of the loop, we're using a regex replace function, which allows us to use a regular expression to say, I only want the numbers out of this phone number field. The rest we can just throw away. So all the parentheses and the hyphens, anything else that's in there, we're just going to get rid of it. And we only want the numbers left. We are then creating a new variable and this is using the sprintf filter. And what this filter does is it's kind of like text replacement but it allows us to specify multiple arguments. So we have our first, second, and third arguments here, and you can see our formatting around those values. So in our filter, we are taking the first three digits of that fixed phone number and putting it right here. We're taking the next three and putting them right here. And then finally, the last four are going right here. And then finally, we update our original object we add the fixed phone number and then we remove those two other phone number fields. So let's take a look and see how long this takes with a for each loop. Okay, so we are done in about 20 seconds here, and you can see those fixed phone numbers in each of those objects. So again, everything works great, but it's a little slow. So let's see how we can speed it up. First, we will try a Lambda function. We'll confirm that the query is the same, which you can see here. And then let's take a look at our Lambda function. You can pause to review this code if you'd like. So let's go ahead and run this and we will see how long it takes. Okay, so much faster here for the Lambda function. We are a little bit under four seconds for this and we have our fixed phone numbers as expected. So that is a significant difference already. But let's see if we can level that up anymore using Xano Transform. So once again, here's our query, the same as the other two. And then we are using two set filters here. We are first fixing the original phone number. Again, that's just removing anything that aren't numbers from that value. And then we are adding the new phone path and we are using some text replacement here to take the pieces of that phone number and add it to this new field. So let's go ahead and run this and we will see how long this takes. So we are down to a little bit over two and a half seconds to update these phone numbers. So we are even faster using Xano Transform. Now for our third and final example, we're going to get a little bit more complex here. You can see that all of these user records have companies attached to them. So what we want to do for this third example is we want to look through all of this data. We want to find all of the companies and get a unique list of those. And then under those company records, we want to list all of the users that are associated with those companies. So it's essentially just a really complex sorting of the data that we are returning. So let's take a look and see how we would do that in a for each loop first. So we start by querying the customer's table. And just for the sake of time, we're only doing 10,000 records for this example. We need to establish an empty variable to contain our fixed data. And then we need to get a list of the unique companies. So this just looks at all of the company fields that are returned from this query, and it pulls out all of the duplicates. We are then looping against this unique list of companies. And we're using an array find all elements function, which takes a look at our original return 
and it just looks for records that match the company that the loop is currently iterating through. We then construct a new object that contains the company name and the users that were returned in this array find all elements function. And then we are adding that to the variable that we established in step two. So we have a full complete object here and we are just dumping it right into this array here. Once this is all done, we are returning that new array. So let's go ahead and run this and we will see how long it takes. Okay, so it looks like we are all done after almost 1,000 seconds or about 16 minutes-ish, 16 and a half, somewhere around there. We did get the data exactly as we need it, but obviously this is entirely too long to wait for this data manipulation to take place. So let's take a look at our Lambda example. You can see here we are running the same query as before. I will go ahead and pull up my code. Feel free to pause if you'd like to read it. And let's go ahead and run this and we will see how long it takes. So much faster than before, you can see we are at a little under two and a half seconds to get the same grouping of data that we are looking for, which is awesome. But what if I told you that this could be even faster? Let's take a look at the Xano transform example. Taking a look at our query first, you can see same query as the other two. And let's take a look at how we're using Xano transform here. So we can see we're targeting our customers variable, which is the variable that contains the records that we're returning. We are then using a filter called index by, which allows us to create a new set of objects with the company name. We are then transforming that data, looking at only a unique list of companies. And finally, we are using the map filter to get the company name and those users. So let's go ahead and run this and we will see how long it takes. So you can see in a, just a little over one second, we are now transforming all 10,000 of those records and getting those user arrays that we need. It is so much faster than using native functions like a for each loop and so much faster than using JavaScript Lambda functions. Now, I'm going to put a little asterisk on this one here because if you're familiar with Xano, you're probably saying, Chris, why wouldn't you just use an aggregate return? You're absolutely right. So let's try that for this last example. So here is our query and we are using an aggregate return type with an add-on to get the list of users that we need. So we're just grouping by company and we have our paging enabled right there. And then because we can't return those user objects as part of the aggregate, we are using an add-on to get the user data. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll see how long it takes using an aggregate return. So not bad, we're a little over two seconds using an aggregate return to manipulate this data in the way that we need. That's pretty good. But there is a huge caveat here, and that is that if the data doesn't live in your database, we can't use this. What if the data is coming from CSVs that your users are uploading or an external API, and you need to transform and manipulate that data? That is where Xano Transform truly shines and you will see huge benefits from learning how to use it in your own backends. And before we wrap up, because I know that some of you will ask for reference, this is a scale 1x instance. So we are just on the base scale plan with no additional upgrades. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about how to use Xano Transform with the expression data type, or anything else, please just feel free to leave them down in the comments below. You can also join us on the Xano community or talk to us via support chat. Make sure to hit subscribe for more Xano content in the future and we will see you in the next one.